Hello everyone, this is Shell C from Paper Rock Tio Studio and today I'm sharing with you my September animal portrait. This is a paper painting style collage using junky paint papers that are left over from rolling off paint, excess paint when I've been gel printing all this month of September. So literally trash paper, just junk, not even gel prints, just absolute leftover paint paper and look at what you can make with it it's amazing this month i decided to do a goat i saw a picture come across one of my social medias facebook or instagram or something of this goat and he was leading into the frame of the picture kind of like what like you know it was just, it was hilarious goats are hilarious and <laughs> I just thought it would be fun. I need some hilarity in my life, okay? I need to laugh. And I I looked around at other different goat pictures after I saw this one, you know, there's always a link or something, or you can always go down the rabbit hole and ugh, goats are hilarious. They're just so funny. I've been told that this is a Nubian goat because its ears are floppy and also doesn't have a, a beard. I don't know if that means it's a not a boy. I'm not sure. <laughs> I didn't look it up. I didn't go, you know, try to learn about goats. I just think they're funny and they're cute and it would be a fun thing to paper paint. So I have this paper that is, is scraps from roll off paper from gel printing because, you know, yeah, lots of gel printing. And I am just looking at it that I, I generally use deli paper to roll off. I have been lately. Um, I use a lot of deli paper because I put deli paper under my projects on my desk when I'm filming. And the reason I do that is because there's glare on my desk. I have a big window that I look out when I'm working in my studio. And also I have lights and the lights glare against whatever, whatever type of mat I use on my desk. And I've tried different ones. I have a glass mat. I have a, a gray, um, silicon mat. I have the the brownish Teflon mats, you know. I've got all, and they're all under this. They're all laying there on the desk under this, but every, everything that I use, those lights glare against it. And I guess I need, probably need a type of light that has a filter over it, but I'm, I'm not going to spend the money. So I just put the deli paper down. Then I reuse the deli paper. Once it gets dirty, I I don't think it looks very nice in my videos. And so I reuse it to gel print with, to use as roll off paper, to um, stencil with. There's just a lot of uses for it. And I can, I just keep getting more and more paint on it, depending on what I do. And so I end up with a lot of collage paper, <laughs> tons. And lately I've just really been into this roll off paper because I roll off so many different colors on it and they get overlaid on top of each other. It's not just one color. And in the the ends in the end of the video, you'll see the close-ups and you can really get a, a good look at those papers. They are literally just paint rolled off from my brayer. But because I use so many different colors as I'm gel printing, I get this really interesting paper. So I've been cutting it into uh, signatures for tiny journals. I've been um, doing different things with it. And that's what these pieces are. I was cutting up, I, I've, made, I've made a few tiny journals and I need four and a quarter by eight and a half, folded in half to sew inside the, the journal for the signature. So if you think about a piece of 12 by 12 deli paper and cutting it down, then I, I have leftovers. And that's what this is. That's what this pile of paper is. I was cutting up some papers. I have leftover paper and I'm, I am doing my entire project start to finish with just that. Plus a few extra tissue papers. I had this uh, package that came with tissue paper in it, a bunch of wadded up tissue paper. And I just cut, I just like kind of tore that or cut it into six by six pieces because tissue paper if, if you're going to do the technique of gel printing where you put paint down and then you put a stencil over the top and you want to pull out the paint in the stencil holes before you put another color on, which is a, a technique I 
personally really enjoy. Tissue paper is great for that. It's it's uh, flexible enough that it gets down in there and it's absorbent enough that it pulls away that paint that's in the holes of the stencils really well. So since I've been using my 6x6 gel plate, I have been using those wadded up tissue pieces and I have a few of those on my desk too for this project. I think I use a little a bit of it. So the first thing I did at the beginning, you saw I drew my goat image and I... I drew it on a piece of deli paper because one thing that I like to do sometimes is to collage onto the deli paper like I'm doing right now. And it helps me to get the shapes correct. Back in the day when I first started paper painting this style of collage, I would do an underpainting and then I would tear up the pieces of paper and I would glue them over the top of the painting if that makes sense. And over time and a lot of paper painting, I've developed this way of doing it, which is just a different technique, a different method where I can create the, the I can do the torn paper part and make an interesting textured torn paper, but then I can also use cutting by cutting out my shapes. So if I draw them on deli paper or trace them, sometimes I draw them onto the page directly or onto the canvas directly and then I will trace some of the portions with the deli paper because it's translucent. So you've seen me do that too. I have a lot of paper painting videos on the channel so if you need to know more about it you can certainly watch other other ones. This is not the first one, it won't be the last. I do this a lot. Um, but what I like about having these thin pieces of deli paper is that I can cut the shapes out and I can I can then piece them together like a puzzle. So I cut my goat's ears off and I, I put some paper on them. I cut the goat's face off, separated it from the body parts, and I'm doing the collaging on top of the, the deli paper pieces and then trimming around because that gives me the shape. Before I did that, I filled in the background with torn paper. So I made kind of a landmass and a hill and some trees and some sky. Like this goat is living out in a pasture somewhere, which is where goats live most of the time. I mean, maybe not always. Sometimes they live in your house, I think. But <laughs> a few people have pet goats that live in their house. I know that's a fact. But majority of goats live in a pasture or something like that. So I made an outdoor scene. So like in the case of where the brown is on the, the right hand side, you see a brown mass there, right? But when you look at it up close, it's not just brown. It's purple, it's orange, it's yellow. It's a combination. It's got coral, lots of different colors of paper. And I've just selected paper that I know is going to eventually pan out to be brown. But no no color is ever one color. If you look out into nature, you look at something and you say, oh, that tree is green. Yeah, it's green. But it's also gray and black and white and light green and dark green and yellow and every other color blended in there. But the majority of it makes your eye and brain think it's green. So by paper painting, to me, gives me that type of power. It gives me the way of making a multicolored, more natural looking. Like if I just take a paintbrush and I dip it in some paint and I paint it on the paper, it's one color. But if I use paper scraps to collage, I get a multitude of colors. And that's what I like about it. That's that's why I love doing this. This is just my favorite thing in the whole world to do. I, any type of collage. I love to glue paper to stuff. I love to create pattern out of it. I think that it's just, I just love it. I'm passionate about it. And you know, everybody's not, it's not, it's not for everybody. Some people like to paint. Some people like to sew. Some people like to quilt. Some people don't do anything creative. But for me, this is it. And I don't think that it's ever going to end Although I've gone through so many phases of types of arts and crafts in my life, <laughs> I've done 
so many types of things. So maybe eventually I will get bored with this, but I haven't in the last four years or five years or something that I, since I started doing it, I just, I like it. I like to do other stuff too, but yeah, my fave. So I'm working on his face now. Um, still with those same pieces of paper, I've torn them up. You can see I'm making quite a mess on my desk and I'm using my heat tool just a little bit to try to speed this up because I don't know if I said this already, but I did the majority of this on the Art Joy of Sharing live stream channel today, which is the September 19th show. And I will put a link below the video so that if you want to see it in real time, if you want to see what this looks like in real time, you can watch that recording of that live stream because this is sped up eight times fast. This project took me if you count how much I worked on it afterward and a little bit of prep time, I probably two and a half to three hours to complete the entire um, painting. And it is in a spiral bound art journal, but I think I might tear it out and frame it because I think it's really cute, <laughs> really, really cute. Or maybe scan it and make prints of it or something like that to frame because I don't know. Goats are just funny. <laughs> and I just like it. I think it's funny. So now I've taken the little face. I've already glued the ears and the body on. I've taken the face. I'm fitting it on there. Kind of like a puzzle to make sure that everything is, is on there. Making sure that there is matte medium underneath and on top to seal everything in. And then I knew the time was running out. And so... I started doing just a little bit of uh, pencil work to show the audience what it's going to eventually look like because I knew that I wasn't going to be able to finish it in an hour and a half. This is how far I got in an hour and a half. So I'm adding some Stabilo All Pencil. And then the camera got turned off. And then I continued to work on it. I guess I'm talking right now. I don't know. But yeah, talking to the audience. Then once the camera was off... Peg and I were just still in the green room and I continued to work on my collage so that I would have something completed. So I started adding in, um, sometimes I add highlights and shadows or tones and shades on my collage pieces using, using uh, paint or pens. This time I did the majority of it. I did, I did have that pencil on there because I was trying to show the audience what the finished piece is going to look like. So I blended out the pencil. That's a Stabilo All pencil, which is a highly water reactive pencil. I blended it using my collage brush and some of the medium so that it would be permanent on there uh, because, you know, it's water reactive. And then I started adding my highlights and some of my shadows using collage paper. So this piece is is got a lot of white paint on it so I'm using it to highlight although it is not 100% white it's got different you know splashes of other colors in it I'm shaping I'm highlighting I'm shading with different colors of paper um, to finish it plus I still haven't done the eyes and so I do need to do the eyes I think in doing a portrait the eyes are probably the most the most important thing whether it's an animal portrait or a human portrait. The eyes are the thing, you know. So, still working on the muzzle. The muzzle, of course, I guess you call it a muzzle. His face um, is going to need, it needs to have light on it because it's coming out from the background and everything was getting pretty tonal. So, I needed to make sure that there was some nice bright highlights to make that look as if it's rounded, as if it's coming forward. Um, out of the page and then I added some other highlight areas uh, the neck where the neck is bending and um, the animal is coming into the frame that's needed a highlight I added some highlights and different shadows onto the ears uh, so you can tell that 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 one ear is flipped out and it has um, you know shadow underneath because it's where the ear would be opening, it's kind of folded over, all those type of things. And I start working on the eyes and putting Dawn different pieces. Goats, 
have strange pupils. They're not round like ours. They've got kind of a slitted pupil. And I did not realize that until in all my years, I did not know that goats had funny pupils. But they do. <laughs> At least these do, anyway. This uh, Nubian goat. I'm not sure about the rest of the goats. I've seen a goat in real life at some point. Uh, you know, I've I've been around the block. I've seen the goat, but I do not remember them being quite as having as much personality as the pictures that I've seen. So, I guess people catch goats doing weird stuff, and then they seem to have more personality than than maybe they do. But um, I still laugh about those goats that when they get startled, they just fall over. I think they're called fainting goats or something like that. That's funny. That would be a funny thing to see. Although I wouldn't want to, you know, I wouldn't want to scare the poor things, but funny that they just faint. They just fall over if, if they get startled. <laughs> it's weird. So I am adding in some more kind of warm tones to the nose area as well. And um, then I decided that that, that place where I made a pencil line right there was wrong. And so I covered it up with some more paper. I wanted it to be dark there, but that line was wrong. It was the wrong shape. So, yeah. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Like I said, you can go watch it in real time over on the Art Joy of Sharing channel. And this is the speed version. If you did like it, Make sure you give it a thumbs up. Leave me a comment or question below. I will answer you in probably 24 hours or less. Um, of course, you can share this on Pinterest. I always enjoy seeing when I'm scrolling through my Pinterest and I see one of my own videos. You have no idea how excited I get. Like, oh, that's my video. I'll say to somebody in the house, look, there's my video. Um, I love it when you guys pin my stuff. You can share it on Facebook. You can do all those things. <clears throat> of course, I've got a tip jar below if you would like to donate to my channel. That seems to be, that, that trend seems to have ended. And what else? Oh, um, Amazon link. There's an Amazon link down there to my Amazon store. And you can use that and I get a few cents if you buy something off of Amazon by getting there through my link. So that's just about it for this video. Here comes the close-ups. I did do a little bit of Posca pin work at the end. That's it for me. Thanks. Bye-bye.